Hello guys, I hope you are doing well. Welcome or welcome back to this amazing YouTube channel where we share various tech information that help us to grow our tech career. So if you're new here, Karibu Sana, you're definitely in the right place. And remember to check on my previous videos. Watch the videos. Please leave a like. Uh, please share the videos as much as possible. And kindly, kindly consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. If you're watching right now and you haven't subscribed, kindly consider subscribing to help the channel to grow. So my name is Lona and I'm a container management engineer. I basically make sure that containers running in various platforms such as Kubernetes and open chips are running okay and the workloads are okay in this video today i want us to look at the differences between kubernetes and open so if you've been working with kubernetes or you've not worked with any of these and you're wondering what's the difference between the two i hope that by the end of this video you'll be able to understand the differences between Kubernetes and OpenShift. And if you've worked with these two or any of these two and you feel like there's something that you want to add in the comment section, I'll really, really appreciate kindly. Let's share the mice that we have. I can't say that I know everything, but I'll also welcome anything that you want to add in the comment section. Let's uh, teach one another, let's help one another to one another to understand. And so feel free to share anything that you feel like I may have left out or you feel like it's really important for, for us to know. Please put it in the comment section. So um, Kubernetes versus OpenShift, what, what is the difference or what is what is, uh, what is OpenShift, what is Kubernetes and when can you use Kubernetes, when can you use OpenShift? So by definition, or rather before even we go to the definition, we really need to understand that both Kubernetes and OpenShift are used to manage containerized application. That's, that's the base of everything. Both of them are used to manage containerized application. The only difference is that, you know, Kubernetes is open source and OpenShift is an enterprise solution which has more capabilities to help you to manage your containers better in a better Better manner than when you're just using Kubernetes by itself. And also remember, OpenShift uses Kubernetes at its core. So it's actually it's it's a I can say it's an enhanced Kubernetes platform. You know, so Kubernetes by itself, I may not give you the many capabilities that OpenShift gives you. So when you use OpenShift, you remember that you still have to Kubernetes at the core, and uh, in addition, some other um, enterprise ready um, features to help you to manage your enterprise containers in a better manner. So uh, by definition, uh, Kubernetes is an open source container as a service framework. It was initially created by Google developers, we know that, and it helps you to automate the deployment, scaling, and management of containerized application. OpenShift, on the other hand, it's actually does the same, but it's more of a platform as a service provided by Red Hat. So it combines a number of services within it. Of course, you have Kubernetes, as I've said, at its core. We have Docker and other features that are exclusive to the OpenShift container. Uh, I mean OpenShift Enterprise Platform, just to enable you to run enterprise-ready um, deployments. So we can see that OpenShift is actually an enterprise-ready Kubernetes container platform. So it takes Kubernetes and it adds some more, you know, capabilities, some more features on top of it, just to make you to run your, uh, to manage your containers in a more advanced way or in a more or in a better way. Otherwise, they kind of work the same. So actually, if you've worked with Kubernetes, you'll find it very easy to work with OpenShift. The, the commands are more the same, are more or less the same, no much difference, only that you'll find more features when you're running OpenShift as opposed to when you're running Kubernetes. And being a platform as a service provides you with a very, very nice UI um, or a web console where you can actually manage your cluster from there. Uh, with Kubernetes, you, you will get the web console definitely by installing it separately, but you may not get as many capabilities as you get from using the web console of OpenShift. So let's look at a few differences. I've actually outlined a few differences, not many um, and not all of them. Actually, I thought like these are the, the, the differences that can really help us understand um, the two, but actually you can get more differences when you go and Google online. So maybe after this video, just make sure that you go online and get to understand better uh, the more differences between Kubernetes and OpenShift. Actually, just make sure that you read about the two just to make sure that you understand it better. So the first difference is the installation. Remember, Kubernetes is open source. It's fully, fully open source. It's free. You can easily install Kubernetes anytime you want on any Linux distribution. Um, but when it comes to OpenShift, it's, it's, uh, it's not free. It's actually limited to Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Red Hat Enterprise Linux Core OS, where it is fully, fully supported. So you cannot run it on any, any, any um, Linux distribution like, like Ubuntu, um, like in Debian, no, it's not. It's not going to be possible. Or you may want to try, but it's not going to be um, a solution that you want to use it. So it's fully, fully supported to run on Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Red Hat Enterprise Linux Core OS. So that's an, the only limitation when it comes to installation. So with Kubernetes, you're very free. You can install on any Linux operating system. But with OpenShift, remember I've said it's only supported fully to run on these two 
uh, Linux operating system uh, from Red Hat. Remember, it's a Red Hat solution and it's definitely fully supported to run on Red Hat operating system. So that's one difference. Number two is the cost. Um, Kubernetes is free, it's open source. You don't have to pay anything for you to run your Kubernetes cluster, especially if you're running it on your managed, um, or on your, on your, on your own um, uh, infrastructure. You don't have to really pay anything to run Kubernetes. The only time that you have, might have to pay for it is when you're running in a, in a cloud uh, environment. And remember, you will definitely be paying for cloud cloud resources that you're, you're utilizing. So it's not as necessarily that you're paying for Kubernetes, but you're paying for the cloud services that you're getting by running Kubernetes in the cloud. But when you're running it in your own, uh, um, your own um, your own infrastructure, your own managed environment. You don't have to pay anything for you to run Kubernetes. But when it comes to OpenShift, it's actually, it's not a free solution. It, have to, it has to be paid. It's provided by Red Hat. So you have to reach out to Red Hat and uh, you say you want to install it either on, if you want to install it on VMware or if you want to install it on bare metal, depending on the environment that you want to run your OpenShift cluster, you'll have to pay accordingly. And remember also there are Red Hat subscriptions. Remember it's running on uh, Linux, um, Red Hat Linux, uh, enterprise um, OS so you definitely have to pay for subscriptions for the for the um, for the operating system as well as you know pay for the support that you get from data and things like that so it's not a free uh, solution Kubernetes is free OpenShift is not free uh, when it comes to support being an open source solution of course Kubernetes has a large community that you can get you know information from um, you don't have to pay anything for that support. You just have to, you know, just search for everything that you want uh, from the community support, and you get what you need for Kubernetes. But when it comes to OpenShift, it's a, it's 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 a Red Hat solution. So you definitely get support from Red Hat, but it is a paid for support. So depending on the SLA, the agreements that you have with Red Hat, uh, the level of support that you get from Red Hat, you actually pay for it. But I remember it's um. I don't know. I don't know which one you will prefer. Do you prefer something that you just look for support online? You get your information online, or do you prefer something that you know you you actually talk to someone and say, you know, I want this kind of thing to be done on my cluster, and it is done for you. Because remember, being a Red Hat product, you get your own support from Red Hat Red Hat um, team. So I don't know. Depending on the one that you prefer the more. Um, this will make you decide whether you want to use Kubernetes or whether you, you want to use OpenShift. All right. Uh, well, let's talk about security. So when it comes to security of the deployments running in Kubernetes and OpenShift, which one, which one is more secure? So Kubernetes doesn't come with any inbuilt security features. So things like the authentication or authorization, you actually have to create your own um, tokens for authentication and authorization. But OpenShift is more stricter. Remember, this is an enterprise-ready solution. So it definitely has to be stricter when it comes to security uh, policies. So user, um, user access, user, you know, defining the roles for different users that one has it's an it's, it comes by default so there's an open shift um api server that control access and also when it comes to creation of ports you know creation of service accounts they come with a number of scc security context context constraints that actually limit what ports and service accounts can do and of course when it comes to patching the updates of your cluster that one you get it definitely from the red hat team because it's supported by red hat uh, when it comes to the web console i can say that openshift has the best web console ever uh, compared to what kubernetes has and remember for kubernetes when you install kubernetes it doesn't automatically come to the web console so you have to install the web console separately and you have to configure things like the proxy the authentication the, uh, authentication tokens for you to be able to log into that web ui but for OpenShift, the moment you install OpenShift, it actually comes with a login based rich web UI that you can actually manage your cluster from. If you look at the web console that is offered by OpenShift, it's, it's actually the best. You can actually do everything from the web console. You can check on your project, you can check to, you can check on your namespace, you can actually create your namespaces from there, you can create your post from there. You can do so much from the uh, web console of OpenShift. You can actually even look into the terminal of a pod from the web console of OpenShift. It offers a lot. It's a very rich web console that you'll actually like it so much. Uh, and it comes by default the moment you install OpenShift. So for Kubernetes, you have to install your Kubernetes cluster and then you come back and install uh, the web console as an add-on and you have to configure proxy for you to reach uh, the local Kubernetes installation. You have to configure authentication for you to be able to log into the 
web console those are the a big difference between the web console for kubernetes and open shift and the one for open shift is really really good you can actually manage your cluster from that web console this has a lot a lot that you'll definitely like uh, for the command line both of course offer the command line um usage of course with kubernetes you i know you're familiar with keep control for OpenShift it's oc OpenShift control so they do almost the same actually the the, the only difference when you're running um commands for OpenShift and for kubernetes is the keep control and the oc the rest of the things are the same for example if you want to create a deployment you can just say keep control create deployment or oc create deployment so it's actually the same okay so that's why i said before that if you work with kubernetes you'll, you'll actually find it so much easier to work with OpenShift. it will be very very easy you just have to um you know just familiarize yourself with the open shift environment and everything else will just be very very easy number seven is about networking so kubernetes doesn't come with any uh, networking solution but you can easily use any third party things like you know cilia weave um so many so many third party um networking solutions that you can incorporate into kubernetes for openshift it comes with an inbuilt uh, um networking um solution it's called openshift sdn container network interface that you can actually use to uh, enable networking within the kubernetes cluster it can still run with those other third party but being a big and enterprise ready solution there's something there's, there's those, uh, those specific things that can that are supported by default so this one openshift sdn is supported by default and you can actually uh, make it, it it actually makes it easier for you to just uh, configure networking within the openshift platform and just make sure that you know your ports are communicating with, with each other without necessarily having to you know to incorporate a third party a networking solution which you may not be really sure if it will work well or it is supported by um the red hat team remember at the end of the day if you have any issues and you want to be supported by the, the red hat team Red Hat will be would want to see that you're running things that are natively supported by openshift instead of you know incorporating any other third party tools which may not necessarily work well in your openshift cluster so that is that uh, about the registry the image registry kubernetes doesn't have any inbuilt image registry but you, you're free to use any other any other any available image registry like docker you can use any other of your own but openshift actually comes the built-in container image registry that you can actually use with the docker hub or and the red hat uh, image registry so that's really really nice for openshift so what i can see is that um openshift tries to make it easier for you to run containerized application it just tries it, it tries to put together a lot of uh, features that you that you may want when you're running um containerized application so things like you know um networking is already provided for you image registry is already provided for you things like security policies are already, already there by default so it, it's trying to make it easier for you to bring all those um um capabilities that you need when you're running a containerized application into that into one product which is actually why it's considered as a platform as a service so there are other um, other differences that you will find out when you go ahead and read about the differences between openshift and kubernetes there are quite a number of them uh, for example things like um uh ci cd integration uh, we've looked at a number of things um and i know that at the end of this video you will be able to make a decision of which can work for you uh, better remember and as much as um openshift is an enterprise ready solution it doesn't mean that kubernetes cannot run production ready workloads no it can do that remember it, it actually was there way before openshift the only thing that openshift came and do is to just to bring kubernetes and bring on top of it those other capabilities that you would want instead of you going ahead to install them separately i uh, think something like networking is really something really really key when it comes to running containerized application and you see an openshift is already um, provided for you by default uh things like uh security policies they're already there by default you can just you know um edit the way you want instead of you know creating your own policies there are these uh, differences that you know can make you make an informed decision but the thing that you also have to make put in mind is that uh, open shift is not it's not cheap uh retail services are not that cheap but uh depending on what you want to do depending on the requirements by your company or the things that you want to run you can actually decide whether you want to go for open shift and pay for all the subscription and get the support the necessary support that you want from directly from the red hat team as opposed to using kubernetes and getting you know 
solutions from uh, the, the support community, which which is also okay because we've run Kubernetes. Kubernetes is really really cool. It's a very nice tool. I've used Kubernetes for quite a number of times, and also the the, the restriction of having to install OpenShift only on Red Hat, you know, as opposed to you know uh, installing Kubernetes on any other available Linux distribution. So those are some of the things that will definitely make you uh, make an informed decision of what you want to go for. When it comes to enterprise, you know, most enterprises want to have something that is you know that is um vendor. Uh, vendor based so maybe that's why people like that will go for OpenShift because anytime they have an issue they'll just have to reach, to reach out to Red Hat and find out what the issue is they always have support from the Red Hat team so it depends on actually what you're doing um, how you want your deployments to go how you want to manage your cluster it really depends on you at the end of the day so these are the differences between Kubernetes and OpenShift and, and as I've said the basis of all things is just for you to be able to manage containerized applications so whichever one you go for you'll still be able to manage your containerized application. So go ahead and look for further information about the differences between OpenShift and Kubernetes. Also in terms of installation, in terms of um, um, how you run your, your deployments, you know, using of Helm. I also found out that using Helm in, in OpenShift is not that easy as using things like Helm in Kubernetes. So there's so those small, small differences that can actually uh, make you decide whether you're going for OpenShift or for Kubernetes. If you have any question, kindly leave it in the comment section. I'll try, I'll try my best to answer. If you have any addition, also let me know in the comment section. I know that some of you are watching these videos have actually worked with this um, uh, things you know you've worked with kubernetes you worked let me know what you think about it and let me know what you think about my um explanation in the comment section let me know if you there's anything you feel like i should have talked about please leave it in the comment section so up to this point guys let me leave it at that please consider, consider subscribing to this youtube channel please like this video if you feel like it's good for you please give it a thumbs up share as widely as you can and let me meet in the next one goodbye